Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Roth from Chip Theory Games. Roth is a one to four player area control game from Chip Theory Games designed by Manny Trumbly. And of course, before we dive into this, everything you see here is a prototype, rules and components subject to change. And of course, I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. But with that, like I said already, Roth is a area control game. It's an area control game which players are vying for points through, well, area control, through positioning, through trying to get out on the board and earn spots in the various regions on the board and get points based on the numbers that are there. You're going to pre-seed the regions of the board with various uh, randomized tokens over here to define just the different amounts of points that these regions are worth. And then when you're scoring at the end of every round, you're going to see who has the most units in a region and if you have the most units in a region, let's say for example over here, you have two blue to this one orange, that player is going to get three points. If you dominate the region, if there's no orange at all, you'll get extra points, and then potentially if you have extra units of your own, depending on which special units you have from your factions, you'll get between zero, one, or two extra points per special unit you have there as well. So basically, you're trying to get your units out there, you're trying to get rid of all the people in your way, and you're trying to ensure you get as many points as possible. To that end, players are going to be tracking points on this track over here. Now, right now, they do have 40 as the end game score. This is something that they're still playing with in terms of the rules, like I said already, prototype, and they're still trying to figure out the optimal score for various play accounts. But right now they have it listed as 40, although we've been playing with less based on suggestions. But basically you're trying to get to those points and game end will trigger on the round that someone crosses that threshold and you'll see who has the most points by the time all is said and done. But the general idea of the game itself, as far as, you know, you're trying to get area control, you're trying to get placement in regions, we got all that, but how's the game play? Well, it's dice drafting. Every single round, you're going to go through a bunch of steps that the game's going to give you on this uh, handy dandy player aid that's going to tell you what you go through over here. You're going to pass the first player marker. You're going to go ahead and in each, in each region, you're going to carry out actions on VP chips. For example, this one over here is going to give you a core you can use for spending resources. Each faction is going to gain a core, so you're going to go ahead and gather a core for each faction as well. Then each faction is going to deploy two units. Now, you do start with a bunch of units in the region, so we're going to go ahead and start off with a few regions, uh, a few units on these regions over here, but you're going to deploy two additional units to these regions, players are going to go ahead and roll their personal dice. You're going to go ahead and roll these. That's going to give you a special action. There's a few different options. So for example, we can see kills, we can see multipliers. You can see the variety of options in front of you. And then you're going to go ahead and roll the action dice and players are going to draft those. This is at its core an area control game with asymmetric powers, factions, abilities, and the ability to draft dice. So we're going to roll these over here and then the players are going to go ahead and draft these nice dice. Now you always use two times the number of players plus one. So for example, in a two player game, you have five, in a four player game, you have nine, and then you go ahead and draft dice with players taking those uh, based on the star player, whoever the first player is, you're going to go ahead and select a die. I can see over here that whatever they draft, if I want to guarantee the kill, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and guarantee the kill over here, they'll go ahead and gather one of these, I'll take the other one of those, they'll take that, and this last die is left not taken. Now throughout the course of the game, this will become a catch-up mechanic. Whoever has the least points is going to go ahead and get that last remaining die, so it's going to become an, a, a catch-up mechanic both in terms of giving them an extra action but also giving them the control of having the last action, which is something that's incredibly useful throughout the course of the game. Once you have those on your turn, you're going to go ahead and take actions. That's the whole point of having action dice. You're going to take actions. On your turn, you're going to spend an action die, and you can possibly spend your bonus die as well with it for one of your two actions, or three if you're the player who has a few of some points. And those actions on the die over here, just to go over them one at a time. We have Cora over here. This is simply going to have you gaining a Cora. You're going to have uh, this, you, this unit over here is going to help you deploy to where you already have your units, so effectively a reinforce. So for example, if you do have units over here, you can straight up reinforce from your supply into that region, which is very helpful. Over here we have killing, which is basically whenever you have a control of a space, or not control, whenever you have units or presence in a space, and you want to go ahead and attack someone, you can go ahead and attack in your region, or alternatively you can attack in an adjacent region as well. And this is a good time to talk about the board itself. You have four deployment zones that are all part of this outer ring around the center. Then you have a center zone, a zone around that, two zones around that, and then these four small islands. Now each deployment zone is basically adjacent to everything except for the two center regions. So from here you can go here, you can go here, you can go under the bridge and around to over here, under the bridge and around to over here, or to here, or under the bridge and around to here. You cannot get to the two center spots, that's where you'll need to slowly work your way in towards. So there's a lot of flexibility from getting from a deployment zone to battle, although once you are on those peripheral islands, it's a bit more uh, required to go ahead and navigate around past that. 
So we have killing, which you can go ahead and attack in your region or an adjacent region. We have the core, we have deployment with the reinforcing, as I said. We have over here, and then we have two more movement spots. This is going to be move two, move any two units, and this is going to be doing a move as many as you want from one to many, spending as many as you want. It's a great first turn play. You can go ahead and grab these tokens over here and say, I'm going to go ahead and attack two over here, one over here, and let's say two over here on that island and see how those potential, uh, well, area control and or battles play out as you go through the game. So that's the core idea over here. You have dice drafting, you have a bunch of, uh, you know, factions over here. You're going to be using the dice as your actions to move around the board, to attack others, to gather Korra, or to reinforce the regions of the board, all with the stated goal of having as many units as possible in the various spots that will earn you points so that you can, well, earn points at the end of the round. Now, in the first round of the game, there's not going to be a point scoring phase. You're going to skip that in the very first round of the game, but in subsequent rounds, you're going to be scoring points based on the placement spots on the board, trying to score not just for control, but for domination, and like I said already, for your special units whenever you have those as well. Speaking of special units, factions are often going to have two or three special units that are going to give you something there, these elite troops effectively, that are going to give you something else that those troops do. Now, I'm not going to be going into the various factions, even the ones over here, I'm not going to heavily go into it. I guess I'll go into one, just so you have one idea over here. To go ahead and gather the Grizzled for the Coda faction, the Grizzled costs you two Korra. You can spend the two Korra, returning it to the supply. Then you can gather a Grizzled, putting it into your deployment zone, from there spreading it out with any other action die. And these dice in particular, they have five health. As you attack these dice, whenever you attack something, if Orange is attacking a die over here, they can spend one die, one attack to go ahead and kill this unit, or they can go ahead and spend one attack to lower that to a four. So that five health, that is one of the strongest units, if not the strongest unit in the game in terms of sheer amount of health. Not only that, when it moves into a zone. So when you go ahead and move from your deployment zone into a zone, it goes ahead and attacks for one damage. Additionally, when it attacks, it also adds a damage. So it's going to basically be a five health creature that is going to five health elite unit. It's going to move and attack. It's going to deal plus one damage. And then if it's in control of a region at the end of the round, it'll also score you two points for each of those that you have presence, meaning these guys have to be taken very seriously. The good news for the other players is that the Coda only have this one special faction, and then they have these custom traps, which are basically little taps, traps you can place into a region, where when somebody else moves into the region, you can expose the trap, showing, look at that, I'm going to go ahead and kill you, or alternatively spawn units, or alternatively steal Korra from that player. So that's the two, uh, the two abilities, the two elite troops that the Coda have, and each of the factions in the game, of which there are a bunch, each of the factions are going to give you, and these are different sides over here, depending on uh, you know the AI side over here, you have a bunch of different options over here for various factions you can play as over here, each giving you again two or three special units plus the regular basic units, giving you something to focus on, as well as giving you a one time use card in the game that you can see each of these factions have over here. These one time use cards are exactly what they sound like. They're a one time use card. You use it one time throughout the course of the game, and then it's gone, and they're incredibly powerful. You want to save them for the moment that's right. Use them too early, and yes, you'll be winning, but you'll also be the target of everyone else at the table. Use them too late, and congratulations, you have a powerful move and not enough time to use it to catch up. Finding that right moment to utilize your ability for your favor is going to be a key part of playing through Roth. That's basically the game. Uh, you're going to have asymmetric factions, you're trying to get points, you're trying to go ahead and uh, utilize your actions. You have this little wild sequence over here where you can trade in dice to be able to take a wild action and then move the marker along over here as you go. So there's a few small edge case abilities we're not really going into, but that is basically the end of the game. You're going to be trying to get points every single round. You're going to be trying to get more and more units out as you go through the game, trying to recruit your special units by earning that uh, that core and trading it in and trying to get as much presence and control and points before the game ends. And with that, we're going to go ahead and dive into the review starting off with ease of play and i'll say the ease of play is pretty straightforward with a caveat the rules are very straightforward this is a you know it's a, it's a chip theory game but it's a manny trembly design over here this represents a new uh, initiative for them they've had 20 strong which is their most successful game so far but they are leaning into adding some more accessible games to the table this is a game that's going to be playable in under two hours generally i've had a game that went as little as an hour i had a game that did drift a little higher past the two and a half hour mark sometimes you could have the right combination of things that get a little stagnant but i'd say generally you are looking at that hour to the 60 to 90 minute range with two hours being the upper end usually. So it's much more accessible both in terms of rules as well as game time. The only caveat I'll give, and this is a prototype caveat, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'll say that right now they are very focused on giving you direct rules in the prototype, but a lot of the interactions or questions, or the way things work or the way abilities work, a lot of that is left up, left up to your interpretation or, you know, house rules or whatnot as you try to figure out how different things combine or just assume what certain abilities mean 
based on, well, not enough information. So I, I do think these are prototype issues. I think a lot of this stuff will be cleared up to having an actual reference or index or play rates or just a, you know, breakdown of abilities. But right now I'll say that for the most part, it's fairly straightforward with the caveat that there's room, some room left to the imagination. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is to begin with the dice drafting element of the game. I like dice drafting in any game. I like the puzzle of trying to select dice uh, based on a pool of dice, trying to figure out not just what you want, but what your opponents will take. I may not be trying to go for an ambitious fighting combat round, but if I don't take those combat dice, somebody else will. So I have to be mindful of my presence on the table and do I think I'm the one who's going to be hit by those dice, because if I do, I may be slightly more incentivized to draft those dice before other players do. And those types of decisions are going to be constantly present as you play through Roth. The heavily asymmetric factions in the game give you a lot of things to focus on. Uh, possibly to your detriment, it's going to be one of those things where you have a lot of information in your first game until you really have played as all the factions or at least seen them in play. You're going to be operating with a degree of like getting, well, caught out by surprise. But past that, the idea of having asymmetric factions with a bunch of different abilities and a bunch of strong powers, these all feel completely overpowered for better or for worse. Just the sheer amount of powers and abilities in those asymmetric factions just give you an overall fun time. You'll have factions that you don't want to hit. They're peaceful, and by peaceful, I mean that they keep spawning new enemies or hitting back whenever you hit them. You're going to have factions that charge across the board, factions that deal with just stealing core and utilizing to power their, their economy on the game. There's going to be a ton of different factions that, well not a ton, there's a bunch of different factions that all give you different little things that they do well, and they all feel incredibly powerful, but it comes down to knowing how to use them, knowing when to use them, and getting your faction ramped up quickly enough that you're using those abilities before it's way too late in the game. The fact that the game is quick playing, the fact that you can get a game of Roth in in that hour range is incredible, gives you a lot of decision space with a lot of payoff, and often doesn't outstay its welcome. There's also a bit of a catcher mechanic. The fact that the last player has that little extra die coming their way is often enough to bring them into the game and keep them involved in Invested without feeling too powerful, at least not for me yet. So overall, a lot of things that I that I enjoy about Roth so far. As far as things I don't like in the game, first of all, I kind of touched upon already with the prototype aspect, but there have been a bunch of questions. I do think these things are going to be, and questions to, to be clear, some of those questions I've asked and gotten answers on, and it's been cleared up, but I can't ask on every single interaction, and sometimes we're just sitting there playing, and you know what, we're just going to house how those uh, two things combine, because we don't have a better rules reference right now. It is in the prototype phase. I'm hoping those things will get cleared up before we get to a final copy uh, for a final production, but for right now, there have certainly been interactions that were not always the most clear for us. I'll also say that in the game that you do run out of units. You can run out of your basic units in the game, and the problem is, like, I, I kind of understand why they do that, and I think it does have merit to a degree, but it does mean that in that one game, and it's only happened to me once, I'll say, but that one game where I ran out of units and couldn't, uh, you know, spawn more units while the other players continue to go ahead and charge forward, and again, I guess there might be a balance aspect to it. It might work out well. It might work out great, but ultimately, for me as a player, it just felt bad to kind of feel like I had ramped up hard and gotten everything done, and now, hey, my units are dead, and when they when they get killed, they don't get them back, so now I just don't have units, so every round we spawn the units, or every time when I can go ahead and reinforce, I just can't do that. Seeing your forces dwindle, as much as it might be a good balancing factor, just as a not a really feel-good moment as a player, so that is an element that I can't say I particularly loved, and I, I hope it's not in the final game, but again, so far it's only happened to me, I've only seen it happen to one player, one time, and that was me, so uh, it's not a common thing, but it's certainly a thing to be mindful of as you play through it. I'll say that the big guys can be hard to kill. And if, for example, over here, this five strength creature over here, which again is the biggest one I think that there is, but even having the fours, the bunch of fours, I find that when you're facing off against a two or three strength elite unit, there are something that just has to be taken down and you put a little more focus on them, you try to take them down and the balance is restored. Versus the fours and fives, I find often fall into a category where it takes so much effort to actually kill them that more often than not, they're not killed that often or killed infrequently. Your energy is often gonna be spent on other dice or other base units because there's just more more control in the game in that sense and so the tricky part is just having a four or five unit and that might be the intent of having them I just find they're not really killed a lot and having a static unit on the board that you're trying to dance around instead of engage with again it's not the most fun it's not the worst that you know both as a player who has it you're like my guy's still alive but I just think it's a little less satisfying to deal with creatures that you're no, mostly not going to be trying to kill but rather trying to avoid as you play through the game as far as I can see others not liking, a few small things. First of all, I mentioned the game feels overpowered, and that to me is a good thing in the sense that every faction feels asymmetrically overpowered. Every faction, when you read their abilities and you're like putting the, the dice on the board, you're like, I can't believe you can do that. 
until you look at your own faction, realize the things you've been doing and the things you've been doing to other players, and all balance seems to be restored. But if you don't like that sense of just complete chaos and craziness, well, this might not be a game for you. I'll say that the game does very much have the, you know, players self-balance the table and beating down the leader. You are going to be focused on the player who seems to be running away with the lead, which means there is a degree of trying to be mindful of not chasing too far ahead in the lead because then you'll be the target, and ultimately this is a game where you kind of have to target the person who's currently winning, because otherwise their board presence will become too entrenched, otherwise they'll pull too far ahead in points, and if you don't like games where the players balance the table and players beat down the leader, then Roth might not be a game for you. As far as final thoughts on Roth, I like Roth a decent amount, with the caveat that I've had mixed experiences with to a degree. Not bad, to be very clear, but I've had really solid gameplays that I was like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing experience, an absolute delight, and I can't wait to continue playing it. I've also had games that had some degree of either questions on the rules or outstaying its welcome or, or feeling not great as you run out of units. And so there's been, I've had mostly, I've had, I've had all good experiences with Roth, but some areas where I feel that prototype feeling where I'm hoping it still conti gets, continues to get cleaned up and improved and tweaked more and more as the game goes. And others where I was like, this game is perfect as it is and I don't need anything changed. This is an absolutely delightful experience. For right now, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I do think it will go a little higher, mostly because my medium interactions with the game, or good but not great, have mostly seemed to stem from stuff that I think will be cleaned up. But for right now, for me, Roth is a 4 to 5, a solid area control game with powers and abilities, asymmetric, asymmetric factions, asymmetric powers and abilities, a very quick playing experience, and one that is very rewarding as you draft dice and try to beat down the other players as efficiently as you can through your actions, powers, and abilities. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, if you're looking for uh, something that felt a little similar in terms of the, the pace or even just the, uh, the, 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 the visuals or the look to a small degree, uh, Runation from Colossal Games is another fast-playing area control game that very much almost has a similar feel to the center board and puzzle you have going on here as you try to run around the wasteland and take other players out. And if you're just looking for one of my favorite area control games of all time with lots of powers and abilities and drafting but cards instead of dice, then I highly recommend checking out Blood Rage. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.